Hello everyone, continuing with the lectures of the intermediate code generation, we will now understand how the uh, three arrays codes are written for the, uh, for the arrays. You must be knowing that uh, in the very few first lectures we have discussed about how for the single dimension array it can be written. So it can be said to that as a2 is equals to x. So we are saying that uh, there is an array a at two index we are storing x value. Or we can write it like x equals to a z. Okay, so this was actually uh, the single dimension array forms that we have been using. But uh, this uh, uh, three address code does not allow the two two d two d array or three d array kind of the thing. Okay, so in case we have a two d array, we will have to convert that to the one d array before the uh, before writing it through the three address code. Now so let's say we have uh, an array of kind a. 4, 3. Okay, so in case we have the array A43, the usual uh, arrangement of this is like in the form of the index, it is 0, 0 index, it is 0, 1 index, 4 rows and 3 columns, 0, 2, after this, first row, 0 column, first row, first column, first row, second column. Second row, zero column, second row, first column, second row, second column, third row, zero column, third row, first column, third row, and second column. Fine. So in the storage process, what is done? It is treated as the single dimension array. So first zero zero is stored, then zero one is stored, then zero two is stored, then one zero. So all the elements of the first row, then all the elements of second row, then all the elements of third row, and all the elements of the fourth row. So 1, 0, 1, 1 element, 1, 2 element, then 2, 0 element, 2, 1 element, 2, 2 element, and then 3, 0 element, 3, 1 element, and 3, 2 element. So this is actually treated as a single dimension array. Okay. So in case we have been given some uh, array of kind, let's say A equals to A, Y, Z. So A is the array. Uh, y is actually the first dimension and z is denoting the second dimension and finally we have to store the value of a y z to x in case this array is of size let's say 10 cross 20 so there will be 10 rows and 20 columns okay and the index starts from 0 okay now if index starts from 0 that means if we are referring to a 3 4 it means that this is the fourth row and this is the fifth column okay so just because it is a start, let, let's say for example if you are referring to 0 2 it means that this is the first row and the third column similarly fourth row fifth column y plus first row and z plus first column okay now if we have to find the address of this or we have to write it in the 1D array form, in that case, we need to find out uh, which element in this one dimensional form the particular element a, y, z is. Just to find that, we first find out how many rows or how many elements in the rows are there. Okay, so if you are going to the yth row, in fact, we are going to y plus first row. Okay, so before going to the y plus first row, there will be y rows that we have already stored. So the number of elements up to y rows will be y into elements in one column. Okay, let's say we have to go to this this row. So before going to this row, we have two rows. In every two row, there are three elements. Okay. So if we are referring to for to this array only and we are going to the third row, before the third row, two rows are there, and each in each of the rows there are three three elements in the column. One, two, three element in this column, one, two, three element in this column. Similarly, if you are referring to this array which is of uh, size 10 cross 20, in each of the column there will be 20 elements, and in y rows, the total number of elements will be y into 20. So we have stored that in some T1, let's say. Now after this, in the in the y plus first row, I have to go to this column Z. 
okay so this will be t2 equals to this t1 plus this z okay if we have if we have to refer to this row if you have to refer to let's say this element so this is 2 and 2 is added to 2 is added from here so 1 2 so this will be the, the address of this element now after this we have to find out if every element requires let's say 8 byte for storage so in fact we have to go to those many bytes further okay for, means 8 byte for this element then 8 byte for this element 8 byte for this element and so on and so forth so we are actually finding out how many bytes a, uh, a particular element requires for storage and t2 is the number of elements total number of elements before that element and multiplied with this 8 is showing you that how many bytes we actually have to bypass okay now we have found the actual byte number where the part, where the given element a y z is okay now if uh, a is referring in this array a is referring to base address okay so let's say t4 is referring to base address of a now if we have the base address of a then i have to go in the array a t4 at the position t3 whichever element is there we have to store that in x okay so we have the base address of a stored in t4 and then at t3 it means it is actually a kind of thing that t4 plus t3 is being done but let's say we are referring to the single dimension array in the single dimension array t3 is referring to how many bytes we have actually passed okay so t4 under bracket t3 we have found the total number of elements up to t3 and then this value is stored in x so this way the 2d array are represented so what we have done here for uh, we have just look back what we have actually done here we have first computed the total number of elements before the given row okay so since in each of the row there are 20 elements if you are referring to the y plus first row, the number of elements before the y plus first row will be y into 20. We have stored that in t1. After that, we have to refer to z element, z plus first element. Okay. So what, what we are actually do, doing that if we add 0 to this, this is referring to a y 0 element. Okay. And if we have to refer to the z element, or uh, that will be, it will be a y z. It means added z to this. So t1 added with z is stored in t2. Now the total number of elements, total number of elements are t2 up to this. Okay. Now if every element requires eight byte for storage, then the total bytes that we have to go further is t2 multiplied with eight and then it is stored in t3 so we know that how many bytes we have to go uh, go further and then we are storing the base address of array a in some t4 and then referring to t4 under square bracket t3 this value is stored in x okay this is actually giving us the byte number and then that that byte number is stored in the x according to this statement thank you